And Pickens County, South Carolina, certainly got that last week. We were doing the Carolina Weather Group show after several tornado warnings were issued by the National Weather Service across the area. We were on the air doing our weekly show when the situation in Pickens County began to change and unfold. And we do have now the findings from what the National Weather Service found when they went out to visit on the ground where that storm damage was. But before we get to their findings, let's take a look back at what unfolded in real time last Wednesday night while we were on the air here on the Carolina Weather Group. Here are some highlights from March the 23rd. Guys, 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 get to Pickens County right now. We got a mobile home flipped over. Three mobile homes flipped over. Pickens County, Pickens County, South Carolina. Yeah. All kinds of trees and power lines down. Uh, there might be something. Something may have happened here because uh, we got. Eventually, request Fall Valley Road, Pickens. Reference weather-related activity. Trees down. Down. Jerry, did they just put a polygon on that? No. I'm. I'm. I'm looking at some of the previous radar data. This is at about. This is right at nine o'clock. This is just as we were coming back to the broadcast. Um, you can see some pretty strong outbound pixels, some pretty strong inbound pixels. Kind of close together, just west of Pickens here. We now have a tornado warning for Oconee and Pickens until 10.15. But you can see here very clearly a base velocity, that tight little couplet here. And and Jared, let me ask, let me ask, because we were just listening to a scanner traffic, firefighters in Pickens County. The one in the same or something different? That's a good question. Frank? Yeah, it looks to me like this is from the, the scanner traffic we're hearing is from the earlier storm that went by north and west of Pickens. Guys, this polygon covers the same area pretty much. So we we so, have the nice. potential that we've got responders trying to assess storm damage from storm A as storm B is potentially now coming down the tracks, Correct. the yes. training behind them at 850. And what you're going to see is rotation right on through here for what we are preliminarily calling storm a and it's where the reds and the greens come together right on in there and again this is 8 55 this is nine o'clock this is now 9 10 and it ex- exits out to the north and to the east and that's what scotty is listening for on real-time communication because the first responders are out there doing some storm assessment from potential damage associated with what we think is that one, although there may have even been one before it. And now here at real time at about 920, we're watching again now a second area of rotation. As Frank said, just a little bit further to the north than that first one uh, is sliding its way on through uh, Pickens County. But guys, I'll also say as the radar jumps on back, there may have even been one before that at like eight o'clock. So, Pickens County here having a rough go at it for the last hour and a half. I, it looks like I would be interested to see if we can get any camera footage from the Pickens County EM weather stem camera. And we are now back with you here on March the 30th. That was a look back at last week's severe weather coverage playing out here on the severe uh, weather coverage brought to you on the Carolina weather net as will's pointing out yes a reminder that was tape playback no severe weather tonight in the carolinas but as jared mentioned uh there was a camera not too far away from what we now know was an ef2 tornado we're going to show you the footage that that camera recorded in just a moment but i want to read for you first the findings from the national weather service of what is that yellow line on your screen for our video viewers this was the ef2 six miles long in pickens county beginning here at about 852 near duncan road numerous trees down including a tree on a mobile home The tornado traveled northeast soon after and knocked down a slew of trees in its path near Rolling Hills Road and Mill Creek Road. Reports of hundreds of trees down in this area, including trees that were healthy and a couple of feet in diameter. Is again the words of the National Weather Service upon conducting their storm survey. The tornado intensified to an EF2 
as it moved towards Windmount Road, which is where the worst of the damage was. On Windmount Road, a site-built home, meaning not a mobile home, sustained significant damage. As the tornado continued on its path towards Crystal Lane, Reese Mill Road, and Lost Valley Road, a mobile home was split in two and rolled over off its foundation, along with hundreds of trees down in this area. That was some of what Scotty was picking up on scanner traffic last week, picking up now with the words of the National Weather Service. At this point, the tornado traveled further along the path into Nine Times Road and Meese Mill Road, where it weakened to an EF1. Numerous trees were uprooted in the area. This leads to the end of the tornado's path, in which was an isolated EF0 damage near Graverly Road, and the tornado dissipated soon thereafter at 9.06. They also did confirm a EF0 tornado near Six Mile, South Carolina, also in Pickens County, which was on the ground for about a tenth of a mile. But taking the cake, that EF2 with maximum sustained winds, guys, of... uh, I'm I'm looking for it here now in the report, but I will tell you that, of course, an EF2 tornado means winds between 111 and 135 miles an hour. And reading this report, 125 maybe. Uh, Yeah. What was the question? I think I think the wind there was 125. I believe. I don't. 125 miles an hour sounds like where we'd be in that ballpark between 111 and 135 miles an hour. And that's the yellow line again on your screen that was on the ground last week for over six miles. And, you know, what stands out to me in this storm survey that the meteorologists from the National Weather Service, the same folks who are responsible for issuing the warnings one night, then going out into the field the next night to take a look at what transpired. uh, You know, they make emphasis here on the type of home the health of the tree, the size of the tree, because that helps them calculate the wind damage and the speeds that were transpiring. Uh, You know, if, if you've got um, a smaller tree, it's a lot easier to topple over than these large diameter, healthy trees, very scary stuff, miraculous, no serious injuries and no fatalities to report. I, uh, I, I'm looking that, I'm I'm looking um I'm sorry I was it's 115 mile per hour wind I, I was just yeah. looking that up so 115 mile per hour and then there was a separate EF zero there in Pickens County as well yep right off over here <clears throat> uh much smaller in size and and also not to be left out we did have another confirmed confirmed tornado on the North Carolina side of things just with inside the boundary for the National Weather Service in Greenville Spartanburg by the way so that's what this red line is they also had to travel up here to mm-hmm. Alexander County uh, to do this storm survey this was an EF1 with max winds of 110 miles an hour and uh, that was on the ground uh, also for about six miles no injuries reported with that one but what Jared alluded to during last week's coverage is the fact that weather stem has a camera located at the Pickens County Emergency Management. And to kind of show you where that is, I'm going to move my radar back over there. And you guys can see I've got it marked here on a map. They're right about here. And this camera, which is south of downtown Pickens, looks off to the west. I don't know the exact degrees that at the west but one of the things we did is we went and we obtained that weather stem camera and you can see the sun setting and you'll remember earlier in tonight's show one of the things that we are talking about with regards to tomorrow's ingredients is whether or not we will get any sunshine because what happened last week was pickens county and the foothills where scotty were where all of this tornadic convective activity ended up happening late in the day with these supercells all got sunshine. Sunshine that I practically never saw even here in Charlotte along that I-77 corridor. So we've uh, gone back and we've grabbed some of this footage. And I'll, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not sure what I'm seeing or what I'm not seeing. I, I can't work that Hollywood magic where I can take a really dark, grainy video after dark and you know bring it up to 4K resolution like you'll see. But NCIS. we could if you would donate. If y'all would donate. We could. Yeah, that sounds lovely. <laughs> I just think you have to yell enhance louder, James. I think right. maybe if you do right. that, you, you type a little faster and hit enhance. I think that's how that yeah. works. So take a look at this. We got a, a, what I would say is probably a wall cloud or a mothership caught on the camera here just minutes before 8 o'clock. 
again, we're looking off to the west. You can see the sun lighting the background. You can see that lowering right on in here. Notice the tree line, kind of get your parameters. We've got grass out in front here because what's going to happen here in the moment on the video is we're going to squeeze it back to a triple box showing you the camera alongside reflectivity and looking at velocity. And you guys can see as we begin to lose the light of day, you can still see those convective towering clouds that we talked about just last night on the advanced storm spotter class off to the west and you know again it gets dark i mean it's it's nighttime and the sky is obviously not lit but there are a couple things that caught my eye that i'm not sure what i'm seeing and i want you jared scotty and our viewers to give us your thoughts on what we might be seeing here you know we're looking for clouds that are, are towering up right we're looking for things that might be supporting convection uh this is 8 35 here as we continue to play this we got of course lots of lightning that was coming through the area take a look you can see some of the clouds that are closer to the camera this is another one of those storms kind of teeing up training over that area you can see uh the storm system moving on through i i I don't know what that is. That could just be ghosting in the image. Was there on velocity something in that direction? There sure was. I don't feel confident enough to say, oh, my God, look, it caught the tornado. I, I, I'm not sure that that's what that is. But, you know, this this footage, had it been during daylight, this camera probably would have been in that exact position we needed. But I will say in these in these frames here around that that tornado EF2 tornado time uh, that we uh, have confirmed from the weather service, uh, you can certainly see some of that kind of that updraft and that downdraft, that wall cloud kind of yeah. moving through associated with this storm. You can see it here, right? Jared, you and I yep. were talking about this earlier. This is kind of that that rear down flank, I think, from that cell that is moving out of view of the camera. Yeah, yeah, definitely that wall cloud is very pronounced. And again, the problem is, the problem, folks, is the problem that we all have trying to chase storms in the Carolinas. Trees! Trees! Just so many trees! And, and, and that's going to make this so, so tough between the trees and the darkness. But but certainly you can see the scud going by. You can see, yes. you know, um, so and, and keep in mind, this is about one frame a minute. So correct, roughly. So again, like it, it, you know, you take that with a with a grain of salt. But certainly, I mean, these these these, you know, the clouds are moving. They were they were hauling, and and I'm, and I'm sure that it had, you know, I mean, that camera had a really good look at that at that it second really couplet. Did. I mean, it and, really really. And to be did. clear, I don't I don't blame the camera at all. This is not no. like an underperformance on the camera. This is this is a dark rural area, mm -hmm. uh, with not a lot of light to work with. Will watching on Facebook tonight says. He thinks he sees at least a funnel cloud. And I think I think it's it's possible. It's plausible. We know the National Weather Service has a copy of this video. They're taking a look at it as well, too. Again, I think had it been a little bit earlier with a little bit more lighting, there could have been something maybe more pronounced. Yeah. I can't rule it out completely, which is why I wanted to bring it on here tonight. And I'll also say after taking those spotter classes, right, guys, and Jared just hit on this, we have things in the Carolinas that makes storm spotting really difficult. Well, be it the tree line, the terrain, whatever it may be. And during that basic class that we at the Carolina Weather Group and the National Weather Service in Columbia presented earlier this March, we played a game of tornado or not tornado, and they were side by side photos. And you had to guess which one was the tornado and which one was scud and which one wasn't. And it was hard because you had to take into consideration the quality of the photo, whether or not there was anything blocking your view. And, and that's what I was reminded of watching this footage. I was going, I feel like I'm playing the is it or is it not a tornado game from the storm spotter training. Yeah, it, it, very much so. And um, and again, you know, uh, National Weather Service in Columbia doing a wonderful job, you know, uh, 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 facil helping uh, facilitate those storm spotter classes. That was a, a lot of fun. And thank you to all of you who joined us. Uh, it was a very, very educational, even for those of us seasoned nerds. Honestly, I think uh, yeah. it was a really great refresher. refresher. And we uh, talked less just last night in the advanced class about how to read the velocity versus the reflectivity, mm -hmm. for example. Yep. Yep. And, and then we're putting all that to use here. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll tell you, you know, it is, it is exceedingly difficult without, you know, more than an image a second, you know, and, 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 you know, we get those flashes of lightning in there. Those lightning flashes could actually have been, there very well could have been more, 
we were not we, we we're getting a frame a minute out of this that the camera takes it at a frame a second we don't have that high a temporal resolution available so sure. we're just going to be able to go off of the stills that we can see a lot can happen in a minute yeah so and and a lot can happen in the six or seven minutes that this was on the ground for mm -hmm. again starting at 852 yeah. and going until 906 yeah. so yeah, but I'll tell you what, those small couplets, I mean, the small couplets, you know, the, you know, we, we get, we, you know, we in weather Twitter are constantly, it's like, oh man, look at that big old couplet. But you know what? The small ones are the ones that get you because like, it's very likely sampling a very tiny circulation there. Number one, number two, they're small. They, they hide, <laughs> you know, they, they hide and that's a radar warning operators nightmare. Uh, so you gotta be really, really, uh, you know, a keen eye on this stuff. And some of them can spin up really fast. We mentioned QLCS uh, earlier down. tonight. Yeah, and, and that was kind of the situation with these last week, right? Where, yes, this one was on the ground for a, a little bit of a while, but some of these other ones, like that other one in Pickens County, the yeah. EF1 that was on the ground for a tenth of a mile. The radar I beam mean, could have been on the other side. It could have been spinning and not even looking and missed it essentially in the blink of the radar.